If you're on the market for a stethoscope, the number of choices can be absolutely bewildering. Which one should you get? In this episode, I'm going to go through with you analog types, digital types, cardiology types. We're going to go through the pros and cons of each one and give you some pointers on which stethoscope you should call your own sweet stethoscope. The doctor is in. So welcome back. This is Dr. Sal, your pal. And in this episode, we're gonna look at stethoscopes. This is an assortment of several of the stethoscopes I've owned over my career. On this side here, I have the analog type. And on this side here, some digital types. So I'm gonna go through these um, four different brands here to give you some opinions on uh, what type of stethoscope would be useful in your situation that you should consider getting. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this episode, I'm, I'm not going to go through uh, like disposable stethoscopes and dollar store stethoscopes and waste your time. So the my very first stethoscope was this one. It's a Littmann, um, and it has the traditional bell and diaphragm. The bell and diaphragm are basically um, designed to capture two different ranges of acoustic sounds. So one is for high frequency and one is for low frequency. Now, this type of stethoscope, I actually use this for probably around 15 years and it still works to this day. So that goes to show you how durable um, this brand is. Um, if you're going to be getting the stethoscope as a hobbyist, I wouldn't recommend bothering to get the type with the diaphragm and, um, and bell. Uh, what I would suggest is to just get one like this. It just has one single uh, diaphragm. This other type here, whoops. This other type um, just uses one surface and depending on how hard you press on the individual, it can change the frequencies that it captures from high range to low range. So it basically can achieve the same effects that this one does, but just by having one surface. In addition to that, in real day-to-day -day practice, all the docs I know, all the family docs I know, we only ever bother to use the diaphragm side anyway. But if you're going to be going into nursing or going to be a medical student or uh, emergency services team or something of that nature, you have to be able to show your um, profs that you have acumen in using the two different surfaces. So in a case like that, if you're going to be uh, using it for professional um, student use, I would suggest getting obviously the type that where you can demonstrate your mad skills. Otherwise, if you're just doing it as a hobbyist, I would suggest getting this type here that just has one surface. Um, a step up from this type here, if your hearing isn't that acute or something, is the cardiology version. The cardiology version put side to side, uh, you can see it has a much larger diaphragm, a much larger um, bell, and also the conductive tubing is a lot thicker as well. And the purpose for that is obviously if you're a cardiologist, you need to hear every little whisper that comes off of a heart. But for most other uh, practicing general practitioners like myself or ER docs or hobbyists, that is an unnecessary expense. And chances are the little crackles and whispers that you're hearing, you won't even understand what you're listening to anyway. So to me, they're not worth it. So that's the analog type. So all of these, uh, utilize vibrations off the surface of someone's chest, for example, or abdomen. Um, and then these diaphragms pick up the sound through the vibration, transmit them along the tubing um, up to your ears, where, where they're then transferred back into vibration and then you hear them as sound. So having a, a good set of tubing is important. And again, I also have to impress on you in terms of cost, sometimes it may appear costly on the surface, but they last for decades. So really and truly, I could have continued using this one. It's just that I felt like I needed an upgrade, so I went for this one. But 20 years later, I could still have been using this one. So that to me is very reasonable in terms of an investment. Now, another thing you might be thinking, which I thought when I was a student, is that, well, wouldn't you be better off, instead of getting a manual one like this getting a digital one like this guy here so this was my second stethoscope so this is number one number two number three um, actually no this one came in somewhere in between there but I never used it that much but we'll get back to that with this one here 
the, my reasoning in terms of getting the electronic one is with the electronic ones, there's a volume dial on them. So I figured uh, that I'd be smart and instead of using this regular one here to impress my props, I would use an electronic one and I should be able to hear a pin drop from across the room. That turned out to be kind of true, but really unnecessary. So the expense that was needed for this, I ended up hardly ever using this in, in my entire career. I might have used it a few times. I really relied on the manual one. But there are a few sweet advantages to electronic ones that I'll just point out to you. One advantage is like this one, I could actually record sound if I wanted to. And the other advantage, like I was just pointing out, is the ability to dial up sounds. But in reality, most sounds that you need to be able to hear basically hit you right in the ear. You don't need a, a volume adjuster to be able to hear them, <clears throat> unless you're working in a very noisy environment. So, uh, unless you're a hobbyist and just doing it for fun, I would, um, if you're doing it as a student, I would suggest getting the real official stuff like this. Now, a step upgrade is this other one here, which is also electronic. But this one is uh, better crafted. One of the main reasons that I stopped liking this one and using it is because the head here is so heavy that when I, when I wrap it around my shoulders, you've always seen all docs walking around with stethoscopes over their shoulders. This one would keep sliding off. It was really annoying because it wasn't ba balanced properly. Uh, this more expensive one, which is also by Littman, uh, has perfect balance. Also, the tubing, as you can see how thick it is here, so it conducts the sound with very little loss from uh, point of contact. Compare that to my student version over here, which has a thin little band. This is really thick. So it isolates sound incredibly well. Then on top of that, it can uh, transform from bell to diaphragm just with these two um, buttons. And it can also increase the volume of sound or decrease it. But again, for the cost, I wouldn't bother unless you're working in a noisy emergency room like I was when I got this. Uh, most of the time, most sounds that you need to hear are going to be fine just with the manual types. So unless you're going to be doing something professionally in a very noisy environment or say working on, I don't know, suppose you're a doctor on aircraft or in the Navy or something and it's going to be noisy around you, uh, I wouldn't bother going for the electronic ones. One other thing, um, one thing you might think might be a disadvantage is that the electronic ones rely on batteries. That actually turns out not to be that big of a deal. Uh, for example, the battery in this one has been in here for well over a year and it still works just fine. So the battery power is usually not a, a big uh, negative when it comes to stethoscopes. So that's electronic type over here, the manual ones and the cardiology one. So out of all of them, I would say my favorite one so far is this one. Uh, this is a different brand. This is ADC, which is like a competitor to Littman. Uh, I find it, it balances well on my shoulders. Uh, this, the acoustics are good. I can hear well. Working as a family doctor though, my environment is not very noisy. When I used to work in the ER, um, I would have preferred this, this one here for hearing extraneous sounds with lots of background um, interruptions. So uh, that ladies and gentlemen is stethoscopes and which one you might want to consider uh, getting. A lot of it depends on cost and what you're going to be using it for. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time with some more doctor secrets. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.